Hello, this is Faith and Faith and Books. How are you doing? This light is kind of harsh and I can't really do anything about it because um, it's at night. It's actually the Super Bowl just started. So if you hear noises, it's from the next room because the TV is on the other side of those <laughs> bookshelves. Anyway, I have, I'm back to my bookshelf tours and I've done, you know, I did my ancients and uh, medieval and I did Dante and Shakespeare and I showed you some of the Victorian, maybe a little bit else um, that's English literature, but everything's changing. So I, I've gathered a lot more English stuff. I'm going to show that another time. I thought what I would do right now is just go through the books I have that are translated. So translated classics. I'm going to take this off. I don't know why I get hot flashes when I start making videos. Anyway, so I'm just going to go through uh, my translated works. Oh, before I begin, Yorkshire Rose. Yorkshire Rose. I, I know I knew your name at one point. I should look it up. But anyway, you said that you wanted um, Plutarch's Lives. And so I'm going to put my um, email address in the show notes and just email me your address and I, I will mail it to you. Okay. So, um, so I'll put an alert in the, in the uh, title of this video so that hopefully you'll see it. Okay. So I think I showed this before. Well, no, I don't think I showed this. This is the Arabian Nights and um, I've never read this, even though it is a classic. And this is a nice, nice one with illustrations. But look at that tiny print. But I do feel I should at least try to read some of the stories. It's such a classic, and I have this. Um, so that's sort of on my very general TBR. Um, so that's that. And then this is Don Quixote. I think I showed this before. This is the one I didn't finish in 2022, but you never know. I might. Um, so those are two kind of... Uh, kind of one-offs. I don't, I don't think I have any other Spanish translated works or Arabic translated works. Um, and then I only seem to have one German, that's Hermann Hesse Siddhartha's, and I don't think this was mine. I don't know where we got this edition. I remember reading, getting really into Hermann Hesse in my late teens, um, but I took German in, uh, in, uh, high school. Uh, don't remember a thing, but, um, I do remember going through a Hesse phase back then. Um, and then I have this one, Sophie's World. This was translated from Norwegian. This is kind of, you know, a younger, for younger people, but it's a history of philosophy told in a novel form about this girl named Sophie. And she has this mis mystery going on. And, and while it's going on, she's learning all about the history of philosophy. So it's really a, a different, intriguing, engaging way to learn about philosophy. And that was originally Norwegian. Then, let's see, my French. My French uh, books that I have, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. And uh, I love this book. I read this out loud to my teen, my oldest two when they were teens. We loved it. It's such a page turner. Um, and this is probably abridged, is it? I'm not sure. It's very long. Anyway, I highly recommend The Count of Monte Cristo. And then I got this and never read it. But, uh, but actually, I read it as a, a teen. My sister, Lisa, and I, we both really got into The Three Musketeers, mostly because of Michael York in the movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I bought this and I have not reread it in a long time. That would be a fun reread. Then my other two French translated classics are, uh, I think I showed this already, Jules Verne's A Journey to the Center of the Earth. I, I enjoy Jules Verne's. I remember reading this aloud. And then, oh, this is the guy I love to hate, it turns out. I tried to read this. You can see how far I got. And I just couldn't stand his pontificating about obscure political stuff that I didn't understand was going on. And he just came off as so pompous. He's a wonderful writer. And I loved it when he was actually telling the story. But he goes on on these, on these diatribes for 25 pages. And I couldn't stand it. And finally, I just thought, you know, I just don't want to read this. It's too much work. So I, I really stand in awe of people who read this and read all that and appreciate it. I was not able to. So I don't know. I'm I'm still keeping it. I know it's a great classic. 
Will I ever really read it? I really want to read just an abridged version. I've never seen uh, the musical either. Um, so that's French translated. Let's see. Um, here's Italian. So I have... I got these... After I got on BookTube is when I got these. My oldest daughter gave them to me a couple of Christmas ago. But this is The Complete Little World of Don Camillo by Giovanni Guareschi. And uh, these are absolutely wonderful. I love these stories. They're, they're um, loosely connected uh, short stories all about this priest and this mayor who are feuding. Um, the priest is Don Camilo, and he's feuding with the communist mayor of this little town. And it's set just after World War I, and Italy was devastated by World... Uh, not World War I, World War II. Um, and, you know, there was all this fighting in the hill country, and they'd been occupied by the Nazis and all that. And so uh, it was just a very traumatized country. The, these do get a little violent, but I think it reflects the time period, but they're very funny. And the third main character is Christ on the crucifix that uh, Father Camilo talks to. Uh, they're really, really interesting and witty and just wonderful. Um, and then the other Italian book I have is uh, Carlo uh, Levy's uh, Christ Stopped at Eboli. And I read this book. Look, you can see, see that? I was flying back from Italy and um, I went with a group and I was single. I was by myself, but I was with this tour group. And I just, I get nervous on planes. And I bought this in the airport and I sat on the um, plane and I read the entire book, the entire flight. <laughs> I started it in the airport waiting to board and I finished it, you know, as we were landing. So yeah, this is a really, really interesting book about this doctor who gets uh, sent into exile in very poor Southern Italy by uh, Mussolini and uh, how he, uh, just his, his time there, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I love that book. All right, and then other classics that are translated. All right, I've never read this. I, I have tried several times. I can't even get past the first couple of chapters. I just, the names just confuse me. And this, I just don't like this edition. I need a better edition if I'm going to sit and read it. I do, I would really like to, to read this though. Um, I'm very, very intimidated by it though. And I, like I say, I think I need a different copy. If I ever do seriously decide to read it, I will go and get a different copy and, and give this one away. Um, it's just too tiny and too hefty. Um, my son gave this book to me at some point, The Complete Prose Tales of Alexander, oh, I can't say that, Pushkin. Um, but these, oops, but these are, a lot of them are just incomplete stories. So I had trouble getting into them. I, I could appreciate that he was a wonderful writer, but it's too, I think I need to read something that isn't, uh, maybe that's edited different, or I, I need a different approach to him because I could not, maybe I need to look further. I just started, op I just opened the book and started reading and it turns out that they were incomplete stories and so they just ended and I just, I just never went back when I realized that the more of Peter the Great was the first one I read. Is that the only one? A novel in letters? Anyway, they were incomplete. So I think I need to start with something else before I can uh, fully appreciate Pushkin. And then this is one of my favorite novels of all time, uh, The Brothers Karamazov. Or Karamazov. Um, I absolutely love this. I have now read it, I think, three times. Two or three times. I think it's more than two. So three. And I, I read it pretty recently, like a year ago, I think with uh, Christy Lewis and several other people. Um, and um, uh, I, I love it now. I started to read Crime and Punishment a long time ago. And I had to return it to the library. <laughs> and I never finished it. Um, and I would like to do that. I remember, though, it gave me nightmares because of the crime that is committed at the beginning that really was nightmarish to me. Uh, so I have to get past that, but I do need to read Crime and Punishment as well. But this, I, this is one of my favorite novels ever. And then this is another Tolstoy I haven't read. I have read like some of his short stories and I've read Anna Karina, but I don't have, or Karina, or however you say it. 
Um, but I don't, look, this is an old Borders <laughs> um, bookmark. Um, but I would like to read this one too. Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy. I have no idea what it's about. But um, yeah, I need to read more, more Russians. Um, and then I have more Russian stuff here. Let's see. Now these, all three of these I have read. This is Lauris. And I recently, Buddy read this with Christy Lewis. She was talking about it. I love this. I, I, that was a reread. I've read this twice. I think this is just a stunning, stunning novel. I adored this book. Um, and a long time ago, I read The Master and Margarita. This is just an old, hard-to-read copy, though. Um, but yeah, this is a screen. Um, I really, uh, I really, I, you know, I barely remember it. I just remember thinking it was awfully clever and, and funny and horrifying all at the same time. So, and then I've also, I think I had to read this in high school or college one day in the life of uh, Ivan Denosovich, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, I've never read his gulag, Solzhenitsyn's uh, gulag, but I have read this. So, okay, so those were my Russian um, translated works. And so the only, the only thing that's left is Yiddish. So I went through a period where I was a real fan of Isaac Bashvi's singer. I still am. I still love his work. What's this? I'm always finding these old, these old bookmarks. Um, this is his novel, Sasha. Shasha. I love this. It's basically a love story. Um, yeah, it's, it says an unusual love story. I, I went through a period where I read this several times because it just, it just fed me. I really liked it. Um, and then I have his A Day of Pleasure and Other Stories for Children, which are these, um, a collection of stories uh, about his Hasidic childhood in Poland. Um, and some of them are fairy tales and some of it is memoir. You can see a picture of that. They emigrated before World War II, so so he was in New York, but he wrote in, in Yiddish. Um, so I love him. And then this is uh, Favorite Tales of Shalom Aleichem, which is, this is the uh, stories that uh, The Fiddle on the Roof was based on. These were also um, written in Yiddish as well. So, yeah. Let me see if I can find anything that's, um, well, here you go. This is, you can see the title is about Tevya, the milkman. So, yeah, so these are wonderful short stories as well. So, yeah, so those are all my works in translation. Um, and I might have a few more scattered around the house, um, but I've been trying to collect them. And after I do all my English literature um, and you know, just things written in ink, English. So first I'm going to do like pre-Victorian, Victorian, and then other British stuff. And then I'm going to switch to American. And then, um, and then I'll have my translated works. But it, I'm, you know, I don't have very many. I thought I would have more. I, I tend to use the library a lot. So, um, so I have read more than this, but I just don't own them. So, all right. Well, that is my, um, bookshelf tour for right now. I hope you're doing well. Yorkshire Rose, please, please uh, give me your address so I can mail you Plutarch's Lives. All right. I hope everyone's doing well and happy reading. Bye-bye.